Okay, so I'm going to make a video going through the whole scanning and editing process. For the first scan, I've chosen this. It's fairly simple geometry, which should make it easier to scan and get aligned. And if it does need developer spray, it's pretty hard wearing, so I won't get damaged. First thing to do is identify areas that might be difficult to scan, like these reflective areas of the connections and this slightly glossy surface. The other thing is different colours. All these things determine the levels of brightness that you need to scan at, how many scans you need to do, and whether you might need spray or not. Place the item in the middle of the table. With the scanner all connected, boot the software and select table mode. Then press preview. This allows you to get everything lined up so that the chart on the left is showing you that you're in the right location. You want all of the details to be in this area. So here I need to move it further back slightly. Now I'm looking at this preview here to check the brightness and that the sense point is on the center of the item. It's looking a little bit dark, so let's brighten that up. But this red is saying that it's too reflective and now needs to be lowered. If you have to do multiple scans at different brightness levels for multiple materials, this is how you can determine that. Darker materials benefit from higher brightnesses, but reflective materials benefit from lower brightnesses. So now everything is set. You can remove the item and initialize the scene by pressing initial. This is how the software knows what details are to be removed later. It doesn't automatically time out, but I normally run it for about 30 seconds. Then put the item back as much in the center as you can, and then hit scan. Keep an eye on the chart on the left to make sure that the geometry is in the ideal range. It's slightly creeping towards too far, but not so much that it's an issue. In table mode, the scans are automatically stopped after around 32 seconds. Now we'll press append and lower the brightness for another scan. As the setup hasn't changed at all, the position of the scanner and the table are the same. You can just hit rescan as often as you need, but you can still move the item. Now looking at the scans, you can see the table is already selected in pink. So just pressing the delete key will remove the table. On hiding the first scan, you can see the table is still selected, so you can hit delete again. Now I want to scan the top section that's been missed on both of these previous scans. So now press reset and preview once again as we realign the scanner and the item. This time I'm looking to focus the center point on the top part of the battery. Again, using the chart on the left, I can see whether I need to be closer or further back. And then again, experimenting with the brightness for this particular material because it is slightly reflective. Now you want to reinitialize if you've changed the position of the scanner or the table. See, now it's only capturing a small part of the table. Put the item back in the middle and start scanning. You can see these scans being numbered one through three. What I'm going to do is rename them as lower one and two and upper one. Then delete the tables that are already selected. Then rescan at different brightness levels. It actually didn't do too bad of a job at the higher brightness settings, but trying to avoid scanning when the preview is showing red is good practice. Now I'm resetting once more as I'm changing the setup to view the battery as best as I can. Reinitialize on the empty table once again, replace the battery and scan. I'm renaming this one side one, clicking append, changing the brightness, scan again. Renaming this to side two, deleting the table. And one more for good measure at max brightness, just to see how it copes. It came out fine, so I renamed this side three. 
Because I'm not moving the setup, I don't need to click reset. I can just turn the battery over and click append. I'll do the same for this side, taking multiple scans at different levels and renaming them. Now I'm happy I've got enough scan data. I can bring them all back and we'll see how good of a job it does with auto aligning. I've seen worse, but it's not great. I'll try aligning with just the two upper scans together instead of all of them. I move the first scan into the top section so that the others will be aligned to that. However, it looks like I should have done that the other way around. But we'll retry the auto to see if it helps it along. No, it made it worse. Never mind, we can move on to manual aligning. So now I'm all set up at the desk and using an actual mouse, which I really recommend, as trying to do this with a trackpad is very difficult. Controlling this software is hard enough as it is. Enabling the transform operator allows you to hold Alt and middle mouse button or left mouse button to move the scans around or rotate, which will help make the next step a little bit easier. Hide all the scans, apart from the one that you will be aligning everything to as your main and the one that you're actually working with. I'm moving the main scan into the top box, so the software knows that this one is the one that I want everything to align to. Make sure to disable the transform operator just so you don't accidentally move anything. Have both scans highlighted. Left click on the button to add three mark points. You can add more if required but I would definitely recommend to use at least three. With number one selected, you can right click on matching points of both of the scans. You want to select easily identified points on both of the scans, such as sharp corners with a lot of clear data points. Repeat this for the other markers that you're using and then click align. Before the update, the scan that was put into the top box couldn't be moved, so I hope this ability to lock scans is implemented in the future, along with a list of other things, which I'll get to at the end of the video. Be careful when moving the new scans around the scene, just as the main scan can easily be moved by accident, undoing a lot of your work. There currently isn't an undo function in the software. If this happens, just change which scan will be your main, and repeat the process for the old one. Once all of your scans are aligned, you can now process the model. By default, all of the operations, except texture mapping, are selected. You can deselect any of them if you want to, or manually process each stage by selecting it through the tools menu. There is a lot of messy stray point data when looking at all the scans together, which could be from the higher brightnesses used. The automatic processing does do quite a good job of cleaning this all up. I processed the data twice, once with the simplified faces slider all the way at the max and all the way at the lowest. But what if the fuse model is still messy and has unwanted geometry added to it? Well, cleaning up the scans manually does help the algorithm determine what is the data that you intended to capture and what isn't. To manually clean data up, have the scan visible and selected that you want, and then using these tools, you can select the point data and delete it. Trying to select point data from multiple scans doesn't seem to be working at the moment, which is really annoying. Some of these tools work better than others, it seems. I mostly use the lasso. And for some reason, when you do select some, the point cloud seems to shift and I'm not sure what that means. So most of the time this is unnecessary, but if your results aren't quite as what you expect, this is certainly something you can do to help the process along. The closer you can get the point data to look like the finished product, the better. There are a couple of other options that you can use in the pop-up box, such as selecting two points and then right-clicking and it'll select the plane that those points are on. This can be really useful for manually selecting a table and you can also select the inverse. 
So if you need to delete a lot of data, you can select what you only want to keep. So a quick list of things that this software desperately needs. First off is an undo feature. Second, an ability to lock scans. Better functionality of selection. Clearer tooltips for all of the icons. The ability to select data from multiple scans at once. And control reconfiguration. The control scheme is ridiculous to be able to use this software and being able to set world coordination for the orientation of the scans. If this was helpful, leave a like, maybe a comment. The next video is going to be going through the handheld process, so get subscribed for that. And after that one, it's going to be going through how to do colour texture mapping. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching. See you in a bit.